What, what do you glean from the Njoku move that tells us something about the offensive plan as a whole? Well, I think the offensive plan as a whole, as we know, is to significantly upgrade the passing game and get it where they need it to be. And of course, we know that tight ends are important in Kevin Stefanski's offense, and they love David Njoku. I think they feel that David Njoku is capable of more production. I've been saying that for a long time, too. I really believe that he's capable of more. And I think this moves him into the number one tight end role. Certainly, he is that from a, a salary standpoint right now. He's a little bit above uh, Austin Hooper in terms of average for next year. And if they ultimately settle upon a long-term contract, he could be significantly ahead of Austin Hooper. And usually your playing time and your status on the team or the depth chart is tied to your salary. So I think he's going to become the number one tight end for them in 2022. Uh, and as far as the, the receiving core, I don't think it changes much for that. I, I think this is kind of a modest commitment. I mean, $12 million a year, is a lot, but they paid him $6 million last year. So it's not, you know, that much over and above. They're paying, they'll probably pay him another six, $7 million more than they did last year in the grand scheme of things. That's not huge. So I do think that, um, that they will still significantly upgrade the receiving core. I think they'll do that with at least two starting caliber receivers, one speedy X, and then another, some probably maybe a little bit of a different type of receiver, but uh, you will see a continuing commitment to the passing game. Hey, Mary Kay from Ken in Newberry Park, California. I like these questions, Mary Kay, because sometimes the specifics of how all this NFL stuff works even confuses me. How much will the Browns be obligated to pay David Njoku now that he is tagged? Just a refresher. Can you just remind people what the money is, how they figure out what money you get when you get franchise tagged like this? Uh, yes, the franchise number is the average of the top five players at his position. And so the franchise tag right now is uh, 10.8. Let me make sure it's the top five and not the top 10. Okay. Um, but it, the, the projected number for 2022 for him is $10.84 million dollars or something very close to that. But that's how they arrive at that. And, um, and that's basically where they will be uh, for 2022, which makes him, um, it puts him in the upper echelon of, of tight ends in the NFL, but they are trying to work out a contract that would make him one of the top paid, like one of the top five paid tight ends in the NFL. So, um, so that's, that's interesting when you think about it, because his production to this point has not matched up with, you know, the Mark Andrews and the George Kittles and the Travis Kelsey's. I mean, he hasn't been there. So it's, it's very interesting that they're willing to throw all this money at David Njoku and try to keep him uh, at a level that, you know, that you would pay some of these multiple Pro Bowl star tight ends. So, uh, you know, he's going to have to put his money where his production is from here on out and, and really try to become one of those type of guys. Now, if I were Austin Hooper and his agent right now, you know, I would probably be having a conversation and they probably had it at the combine. I would be having a conversation about the Browns, about what are their intentions with him? How did they see his role? I mean, look, his production was down significantly last year from what it was, it was like half the production that he had when he was a pro bowler in Atlanta. And so if I'm his agent and if I'm Austin Hooper, I'm probably trying to go somewhere uh, where I think I'm going to get the ball more and he will probably get it less now that David Njoku will be the number one tight end. So, uh, so this is definitely something to keep an eye on. But the thing with Austin Hooper here is that he has not worked out from a chemistry standpoint with Baker Mayfield at all. It's not a match. And Austin Hooper is not flourishing and thriving in a Cleveland Browns uniform. Now, we, I talked to some people at the Combine that said, you know, you don't always see his contributions. He is, you know, doing things on that field, you know, from a blocking standpoint. And he's still grading out really high and playing really, really well. And he's very valuable to us. That's, that's what I was told by, uh, by someone over the weekend. But, you know, that's a lot. That's still a lot of money. Ten and a half million dollar average is still a lot of money to pay someone, uh, you know, to kind of be more of a, a role player or a blocking. That's 
that is starting tight end money. That's number one tight end money. So not really sure how they're going to view it because obviously in this scheme, uh, multiple tight ends are important. In a lot of schemes, one is enough. But here, two good ones are required. So maybe they will just go ahead and pay it, not worry about the money all that much, trim elsewhere, which they still are, are going to do over the next couple of weeks, and, uh, and just keep it going for another season. So we'll, we'll have to see, because if the player sort of demands a trade, then that might force their hand a bit. 